My son sold 50 things in one week. He's 14 years old, and this episode is the lessons that you can learn from my 14-year-old son about sales, and it is juicy today. Okay, on the podcast today, we are going to be talking about um, my son and his sales (laughs) extravaganza that he had this past week. And so if you follow us on Instagram, you might have been seeing this story as it was unfolding live. If you don't follow us, go to The Daring Daughters on Instagram and give us a follow because we talk about a lot of things on there. But um, today in the episode, I am going to break out why he was successful. I'm going to give you six things that he did that helped him to be successful that you can do with your own sales. And at the end, there is a bonus item, so you want to listen all the way to the end, that actually ties everything together and has to do with a supernatural phenomenon that is found in the Bible. So today's episode is juicy. Buckle up. It's a little bit longer, but it is worth it. Welcome to the Daring Daughters Podcast, where bold faith meets bold income and cultivates a vibrant, family life. As God's daughters, we embrace unwavering faith and aligned action without sacrificing our families. We tell inspiring stories of daring women who have gone before us and the men who stand by our callings. We learn the wisdom of scriptures and our Heavenly Father who calls us higher in Him. We break free from limitations and tap into the abundant provision from a God who is infinitely able to do more than we could ever imagine or expect. Witness the incredible moments of women who have taken courageous and bold action in their calling. Uncover what's possible for you as a daring daughter of God. Embark on this extraordinary journey with us. The Daring Daughters starts now. Okay, let's get into today's episode. If you have been following um, the Daring Daughters Instagram account this week, you have seen me talk about my son's sales (laughs) record-breaking week that he has been having. And I don't share too much about our personal life on the Daring Daughters because we are building an agency and we don't really want it to be based around just one person. So we're really trying to figure out how to do that and grow it in a way that um, I don't become the face of it. And we're still exploring how to do that. The big goal for the Daring Daughters at some point is to become a venture capital firm, which basically means instead of people paying us to be a part of our programs, at some point, we will move towards a model where we actually invest in companies. And if you know anything about venture capital um, funding, which is what I'm actually going through right now in one of the companies that I own, is that it's not just uh, grants, it's not scholarships, it is a serious partnership between somebody really believing in your company. And in exchange for them investing in your company, you actually give them a piece of the equity of your company. So you'll give them a percentage of ownership of your company. So that's the model that we're moving towards. It will probably be five years or more before we get to that model, because A, um, we need to learn about venture capital ourselves. It requires a group of investors to be backing you. And so there will be multiple people who have high net worth and are actual investors themselves as their careers to be involved in this. And so this is our big vision for the Daring Daughters. And so um, that's why I don't talk about my personal life too much on the Instagram is because where we're headed is that we want to move to a place where this is a an agency that Um, grows so big, people don't even know who I am. Okay. Um, And maybe at some point, we'll have different experts on the podcast. Um, We actually tried this a few years ago, and um, it didn't work so well a few years ago, but there could have been some reasons for that. So um, at some point, this will probably be a podcast that isn't just me talking. Um, So anyways, that's kind of where we're headed. And I like to kind of share the vision because I like you to be praying about the vision, but also so that you stay 
stay here and you stay informed because maybe someday the Daring Daughters will be your venture capital partner. Um, but for now, we actually act charge for people to come in and get coaching inside of our programs because um, we don't take equity in their company and um, we don't uh, have that long-term partnership with you. We actually have you come in for a year. We work with you for a year and then we graduate you to our alumni program, which we just launched. So if you're an alumni from a retreat or a mastermind, you can move into the alumni program. You have to have gone on a retreat or have been in our mastermind to be in our membership because the things that we teach and the methods that we do are very unique. I actually have never seen anybody do what we do. And um, we want to make sure that the people who are in the membership are all on the same playing field, that they're equally yoked, that they are running the same race. So it is a pretty exclusive community. We're excited about the community starting. um, But Going back to talking about my son on my Instagram, there's a lot of people who sent me messages about it and they were like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So I thought I would do a podcast episode breaking down why I think he was so successful in his sales and what he did right and the various things that you can take away in your business and I can take away. I I was blown away by him this week and I really was inspired to level up my own business and my own sales from watching my son, which is so cool, right? Isn't that the goal? We all want to have our kids grow and become somebody 10x what we had capabilities in. So just to kind of give you a breakdown, um, my son sold 50, he had 50 sales in one week. And now he's 14. So he goes to school full time. Our kids are in public school. And so he goes to school for seven, eight hours a day. He also lifts weights before school in the morning. So he actually gets up a little bit before six every day, about 545. Uh, We take him to school. He lifts weights with his... um, with his like football team at school before he even starts his day at school, he eats breakfast at school. The players all eat together. He brings food from home. I think he probably gets stuff from the cafeteria. I don't know, but he, I know he eats a lot of stuff at school. And then after school, sometimes he comes home and has a little bit of a break before going to baseball practice. But um, some days he goes to practice straight after school and then comes home. So he has on an average day, about a 12 hour day. So he doesn't have a lot of time for sales. And we're going to talk about this in the episode today, a little bit later on, we're going to talk about his schedule and how he mapped out his sales. So I highly encourage you to get your earbuds in, listen to this whole thing. There is some juicy nuggets coming that are going to help you with your sales that you're going to learn from a 14 year old boy. Okay. So a 14 year old boy can do this, you can do this. Okay. I'm telling you, you can do this, ladies. There is so many things that we have created stories in our head about when it comes to sales and when it comes to business and lies that the enemy tells us. And we're going to go through all of those today. So I just want to give kind of a reminder. We have, um, we're really like leveling up over here with our technology at the Daring Daughters. Um, This is all in preparation for our vision of where we're headed. And some of you who are on our email list have dealt with a very patient, um, you've been very patient as we've had our emails go out at wonky times. Sometimes they were going out double. Our deliverability rate went from 50% down to 9% when we switched to a new server. Um, The new platform that we're using is a very robust platform that allows us to basically do everything in one, okay? So think about all of the different technologies that you're using and it all combines it into one place so that you can have really strong metrics about what is working and what is not working. So I can see every single page that's visited, how it converted. Um, I can communicate with people via text and email. I can create pipelines and sales funnels, and we can have a membership, a blog, a a website. We can have our text messaging, our emails. We can do... um, you know, courses, physical products, digital products, all of the sales, everything all in one place. So it's really cool. I have not implemented this new system with any of our clients because quite frankly, it is very cumbersome and it has, there have been many times I've almost quit because it's a, it's a really complicated system 
it is not easy to learn. It has taken me over a year to learn it. And um, I don't think it's the best thing to do unless you have um, the need for it, because I think you should always do whatever is the simplest funnel in your business. And for many people, nowadays especially, there is some really simple funnels that you can set up where there's just a couple steps, it's easy to manage with the technology, and that's mostly what we use with people because you don't really need all of this unless you are going to a place where it's required. And for many people who just want to have sales, they want to have a point of sale method, they want to have a distribution chain and a supply chain all figured out, you don't need this stuff, okay? So anyways, all that being said, um, we have a blog, okay? We're a blogger now. So our blog is going to start, um, and at some point we'll pay somebody to go backwards and put all the 270 episodes that we have um, into blogs, but that's a project way down the road. Um, so moving forward, we've decided to just have each episode have its own blog. So if you go to um, www.thedaringdaughters.com forward slash blog, or just go to our website, www.thedaringdaughters.com, um, you will see that um, our uh, blog, our episodes are all in blogs. And so this episode has a blog. So some of the things I'm going to talk about in the episode are in the blog, like the links. So we used to put all these links like in the show notes, and now we're actually putting them in a blog. So you have to like go to the blog first. And um, that will help you to get to all of the resources that we're going to talk about. And it's just a much cleaner way to do things. Um, it allows you to have the blog right into your inbox. We put it on an email list every week. And, um, you know, so that way you stay connected with us and you have everything that you need in one spot. So it's a lot cleaner. And, you know, blogging has SEO, it lives forever. So when people Google key terms, hopefully they'll land on our blog in the future. So that's the plan. Okay, so if you want to follow along with the blog while you're listening to this, you can. Um, if you got this in your email today, um, you already have it. But a lot of stuff I'm going to be talking about is in there. Okay, so let's kind of dive into the um, six sales secrets for my 14 year old son and his 50 sales in one week. Yes, you read that right. 50 sales in one week. Wouldn't that be awesome to have 50 sales in a week? That's pretty good for a 14 year old who doesn't even have social media. This kid, I don't let my kids have social media. And if you haven't researched about this, you should definitely go do some, some, some reading about this. I was a guest on a podcast called Screen Strong. Um, if you search my name in the Apple podcast readers, you can see all the podcasts that I've been on. And I was on the Screen Strong podcast because I took their Screen Strong challenge. Um, just a shout out to them. This is a great organization about the dangers of social media. So my kids are not allowed to have social media. We have an older child who's 23. Obviously, he can do what he wants. He's an adult. Um, but we allowed him to have social media and we saw some major damages from it. So with the other two children after him, um, you know, because he, my oldest grew up in like the Snapchat era where we didn't really know this was going to harm these kids. You know, he was like, the, they were like the test pilot, these poor 18 to 25 year old kids nowadays, they were such a test ground for technology. And I think some of them are better for of it and from it and some of them are worse, but we made the decision after him to not let our kids have any social media. So they don't have Snapchat, they don't have Instagram, they can text their friends. Um, they can watch a little bit of YouTube every day for learning, but that's about it. And um, anyways, so my son did all of this without any social media. He didn't, uh, he made these sales by literally knocking on people's doors. Okay. So we're going to talk about that today. This episode is so juicy. I cannot wait to go into all these details with you. Okay. So first things first, um, my son believed in his product. Okay. So uh, a lot of you have businesses with products that you kind of came into because you thought it was a good idea at one time, or you put a lot of time into it. So you have like an emotional attachment to it. Or maybe you represent or affiliate for a product and you're just so tied into the community that you um, you feel a loyalty to the product. But we need to all be examining our products all the time. We've changed products many times here at The Daring Daughters because we would try something, 
we would not like the results that it gave people, or I wouldn't like the time or money commitment that was involved with it. Um, and then we would pivot. And so we have really gotten down to the products that we feel good about here that I can sustain, that we can sustain. But as we move and grow, obviously we're going to have new products. So evaluating if you're with the right product is so important. Um, you know, there are 172 verses in the Bible with the word profit and 35 verses with the word sales. So if you just do like a quick search, that's how many verses talk about profit. Your product is directly related to your profit. Okay. If you have a product that doesn't have the right price, it isn't the right product. It's not sellable. No one wants it you're not gonna have profit, okay? So when we look at all these verses and we like unpack this today, you need to be thinking about, am I representing the right product? And if not, it takes bold courage to back out from that and to just say, you know what? I thought this was for me, it's not for me, or maybe this isn't my season. And a lot of people are afraid to change their mind about their product because they, they have like shame attached to that or they feel like it's you know gonna mean something about their business. Uh, integrity or their business, um, you know, just prestige. No, it doesn't. You should definitely get rid of products that don't work, that aren't profitable, etc. This is why in our master plan that we sell, which you can buy for $97, it is the best value of anything you will buy for your business. I stand by that, okay? In the master plan, there is actually a, a whole entire section that talks about your products and evaluating every single month what you're selling, how much you sold it for, who you sold it to, how many sales you had, and how what went well and what didn't go well. So that all throughout the year, you can go, this is a problem or this is working really well. It's really important to be evaluating your product every month, okay? So the Bible is full of wisdom about sales and business if we're willing to pay attention to it and crack open the book, okay? Um, over and over, the verses say that you need to have integrity with the product. Okay, so how do you know if you need to move on from your product or if you're selling a good product? Okay, I would say the first thing is if you don't get excited about talking about it, it's not your product. It's not for you. You should be very excited about your products to the point that you have no problem talking about them. Now, this is different from I have fear of sales and talking about things and, you know, promoting myself, that's different than, I don't know if I believe in this product, okay? I have definitely been in a situation where I was like selling a product I didn't believe in. Um, I was a part of, I am part of a network marketing company that I still earn an income on. I've earned um, well over $100,000 from this company doing affiliate, um, sending us an affiliate link. And I didn't love all of their products. There was many products I loved, but there were some that I'm like, this is a dumb product or this is a way overpriced product. I didn't promote those ones. I didn't talk about those ones. I talked about the ones that I loved and the ones that I could get behind. So making sure that you have a product that you can talk about is so important. And if you feel sick about talking about your product or you feel like it's not a good value or you feel any certain way about your product, it means it needs to change. Um, if your products aren't um, in a good, like if you don't have a good product suite for what you feel good about, um, join our mastermind. Our mastermind goes for the whole year, starts in January, ends in December. So we're um, doing the wait list right now for next year. You can't start till January. Um, but come in there. We evaluate all your products. We go through everything to make sure that you have a really good product suite and that you feel really comfortable about it. And this isn't something that you can just do like on a whim. Like the master plan is going to highlight to you if there is a problem and it's going to give you, it's going to illuminate solutions for you by praying about it and by God giving it to you. But if you needed a strategist to really dig into the sales pages, the landing pages and all of that, the master plan is going to help you get started. It's not going to help you do that. The mastermind will help you do that. Okay. Or our retreat. You can come on our retreat. That's a great place for that. Um, all of this is in the blog post today. Okay. So um, there is a verse in James that I think really applies to this um, point about the product. Okay. And the verse is in James four and it says, come now you who say today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you don't know what tomorrow brings. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. Okay, what is this saying? It's basically saying, 
you don't have to be all braggy on Instagram about what you got going on, okay? You don't have to be all braggy about your product and everything that's going on there and brag about how much money you're going to make and all this stuff. Because we don't even know what our, what's going to happen in our life, right? Like tomorrow, something detrimental could happen in our lives. Um, we don't know. So we can only live today and say, God, if this is your will, then keep me on the right path. This is a prayer that we pray all the time in the mastermind. At every single one-on-one call we do with the women, we start with prayer. And we always pray, God, give us direction. Close the doors, open the doors. So this is a prayer that you need to be praying about your product. Is like, God, if this is your will for me, then illuminate this path for me. Show me this way. Um, I do this all the time. If I start to see that stats are are waning, now that I have like really clear stats on everything that I can see from our new software and the podcast gives me stats, you know, social media will give you stats. When you look at your data and you're like, this is not working, you need to evaluate what is going on that this is not working. Do I need more education? Do I need a different product? Like, why isn't this working? And praying to God that he would illuminate the path for you is so critical. Okay. Admitting your product is the wrong product can be heartbreaking, but it doesn't have to be, okay? So my son, he believed in his product. And let me tell you about his product. So what my son was selling was a $20 discount card. Have you ever seen these discount cards? They're frequent fundraiser for sports. And um, he's sold a lot of things for sports. And I've been like, oh, sure, here's 20 bucks. I don't need this. I don't want it. I don't ever use it. But I just consider it a donation. Okay, but this product he had actually was pretty valuable. So let me tell you why. So the card cost $20. The investment is $20 for this card. Okay. And On the card are two oil change discounts for a local oil change place that would give you $17 savings um, for oil changes. So just getting your oil changed two times in a year, which most of us do, you would actually already start getting, you'd already start benefiting from this card. And then on top of it, there was a whole bunch of restaurants. There was some gas savings on there. There was um, some grocery savings on there. But there was one item that I know was the, the, the thing that made my son believe in this product. And it was a Dairy Queen coupon that if you buy a Blizzard, you get a second Blizzard for 99 cents. Okay, where we live in our area, Dairy Queen is like the thing to do on summer evenings, okay? So a lot of, you know, we live in Minnesota. The winter can be very coopy, cooped up. So in the summer, everybody's out and about and they just, you know, really maximize this time. And so if you live in the Midwest, you know that Dairy Queen, every single night of the week, all throughout the summer, it has a line for days, okay? Line for days, because people go play baseball, then the team goes out and gets ice cream. Or people go to their soccer game, or couples will go there for a little date night, you know, a cheap date night. Teenagers, teenagers love this place. So to have a basically BOGO, right, for a product at Dairy Queen, all my son had to highlight on this product was, hey, if you get your oil changed twice, you're actually going to get your entire money back on this card. And then you get to go to Dairy Queen all summer long and get a free, a free, a, a very reduced second blizzard, like a BOGO blizzard for 99 cents, right? So his sales, his product he believed in because he's like, this is a no brainer. Why wouldn't you buy this card? You buy this card, you get your oil change. You've already made your money back. Plus you've already saved money, right? So this, this makes no sense to not buy the card. He believed in his product. So do you believe in your product? Do you believe that it can actually change people's lives? If you don't, this is the first place to start, is to get your belief up in your product. So either get some help to change your product, get some help to learn to talk about your product, but you need to have a very clear list of what is the value of your product. Okay, so this is number one. Um, Okay, wow, we're 20 minutes in and I've only covered number one. So we have a lot to do here today. So this is going to be an awesome episode. I It's going to be longer, so just buckle up, but it's going to be worth it, okay? Okay, the second thing, my son had a good hook. Do you have a good hook, okay? A quick internet search will tell you that humans have an eight second attention span. I actually would argue it's actually about three seconds. So recently I was looking for some royalty free background music for a project and I found myself getting annoyed if a song didn't immediately catch my attention. 
And when I scroll on Twitter or LinkedIn or for the Daring Daughters Instagram page, and I don't immediately see why I should watch a post because there are so many posts, that's why we're just doom scrolling because we're just looking for something that's gonna be like dopamine hit for our brain. So in the blog post, I put a link to a great article about how to scientifically craft a strong pitch. So you need to go to the blog to get to this link, um, but it's an amazing blog post about like the science of what makes a good hook, okay? So let me tell you about my son's hook. So my son would knock on the door and the person opens the door. Of course, have you ever had like opened a door to like somebody trying to sell you something? Your like radar immediately goes up for like being annoyed, okay? And so my son tried a few things for his hook and he eventually, after trying a few things, landed on the following. This is what he says. They open the door, he says, hi, my name is Calvin. I'm with the baseball team and I'm basically giving out free money today. That's it, okay? Hi, he said his name, I'm with the baseball team, a little bit of background, and I'm basically giving you free money today. Do you wanna take a look? Okay, so then his next step was a question. So the hook was like, well, yeah, who doesn't want free money, right? He wasn't like, I'm selling this baseball card and it has Jerry Queen on it and it has this on it. No, he was like, I'm giving out free money. He had a hook, he had a strong hook. So that's what kept the door open, right? That's what kept the door open so that he could actually have the conversation about the sale. So what is your hook, okay? Do your Instagram reels have good hooks? Does your sales pitch have good hooks? Do you have a good hook? Or when you start talking about your product, are you like blah 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 and you're telling all these details and then everybody's eyes are glossed over? You need to have a strong hook to get people's attention, okay? My son didn't have a great pitch, which we're gonna talk about the pitch next. His pitch wasn't like, the worst, but it wasn't the greatest because I can tell you right now, I've seen him talk. So he's 14, you know, he doesn't have like a sales uh, persona. He just has like how 14 year olds talk, which is like kind of monotone. And, you know, they kind of, you know, they don't have a lot of emotional inflection. (laughs) So I'm sure it wasn't the best pitch, but the hook is what got people. Okay, so there's a verse in 2 Corinthians that you should know about that has to do with this. Paul over and over and over talks about how he wasn't like the best speaker. Now think about this, Paul, the guy who like basically is responsible for all of Christianity getting anywhere in the world after Jesus, he didn't have a great speech. But what he had is that he had, he, it says in 2 Corinthians 10, 10, it says, he's quoting himself and he says, for his letters say they, so people say about my letters, they are weighty and powerful but his bodily presence is weak and his speech is contemptible. So basically this verse is saying that Paul didn't really have a great like speaking presence, but what he had was powerful and weighty words, okay? He had the right hook, okay? So think about how translate the Bible and what Paul had into your business and start thinking about your hook, okay? So go to the blog and check out that link that I put in there for that episode or for that article for crafting a strong pitch. Remember, go to www.thedaringdaughters.com forward slash blog to get to our blog. Okay. Now, the next thing about what my son did right, um, or maybe didn't do right, but is necessary is a sales lesson is the pitch, my son's sales pitch. Okay. I don't think he had a strong pitch. So let me tell you what he did. So he had a great hook. But then after that, he would say, do you want to take a look? And then he would hand them the card. And then he would, while they're looking at the card, he would say, basically, if you get your oil changed, it pays for itself. And then you get to go to Dairy Queen all summer for basically free. You know, so he just, he didn't have like a, um, he didn't like go into the product a whole bunch. You know, he kind of just had like a one liner that he would give them and then he'd let them decide. But here's what he did right in his sales pitch. Okay. He had brevity. He spoke very little, and this is the key in sales, is you don't wanna go on and on and on about your product, okay? If you have to give speeches about your product, it means the sales process has a kink in the chain, okay? My son closes about 60% of his sales this week, and I don't think that's bad, but the lesson we can learn from this is that you having a good hook can make up for a weak pitch, but if you talk too much, even a good hook cannot save you. 
Um, there's a verse in James that says, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to become anger. This is a very good lesson to us that we should be listeners in our sales process. We should be listening for how our business can help solve their problem and being slow to speak too much. Okay, the next thing is my son had a goal, okay? Um, so do you have a goal? And is your goal measurable? Does it have a time frame on it? And can you map out how many people you need to talk to to hit your goal? Because that's what he did. He knew he wanted to get, there's a certain prize that he gets if he gets a certain amount of sales. So if he gets 85 sales, he gets a certain prize. And it's basically about $300 worth of um, gear and cash that he has to get. And hang on a second, my dog is making a lot of noise. I need to shut my door. This is podcast editing in real time here. Um, so he had a goal, okay? And he knew what his goal was. He knew what he wanted to do with it. And um, he calculated out, like, how many houses do I need to knock on their door to hit my goal? So after, you know, the first 20 houses, he's like, okay, this many people open their door and this many people say yes. So I need to talk to X amount of houses to hit my goal, okay? So he's not like, I'm going to um, make this many sales. He's saying, these are the actions I'm going to take to hit my goal because I know that not everybody's going to say yes to me. This is a huge thing that a lot of the Daring Daughters don't realize. People think you can just make a course and because you have a thousand followers, it means you're going to have a thousand sales. It is not the way it goes. In fact, most people who come into our programs, it's because they've tried to create something that no one asked for. So they had no warm market asking them for this product. They made it, they tried to talk about it one time on their Instagram story and then it didn't sell and they're like, it's not working. I'm like, because maybe four people actually saw that that needed it and you didn't have a strong hook, you didn't have a strong pitch, you didn't, they didn't, can't even see the value in what you're selling. So when you are making a sales plan, you need to have a goal, it needs to be measurable, you need to track it, okay? So this is why in the master plan that we sell, you can really map out and keep track of your conversations you're having with people, who you're networking with. It's all laid out in there for you so that you can actually know, like, am I actually going to hit my goal or am I delusional? Most people don't do this. They don't track anything of their progress. They don't map anything out and then they wonder why they're not like making a bazillion dollars in their business, okay? You have to use some actual business acumen when it comes to the goal. So there's a really good verse about this that says, um, in 2 Corinthians, that says, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. This is the law of the harvest, okay? The law of the harvest says that if you plant a lot of seeds, you're going to get a lot of, of, of plants. So if you're not having conversations, if you're not putting things out there, those are seeds in your business, you're not going to have a harvest, okay? So then you can't wonder six months later why you didn't hit your goals. And this is something I'm constantly reminding myself of, okay? Because I have to do a lot of sales in my business, in all of my businesses, a lot. Okay. Like I'm the primary salesperson in most of my businesses. And so I need to have a lot of conversations. I need to have a lot of networking. I need to be engaging in places online. I need to be going to things in person. I need to be attending events. And if you are not willing to at least get in front of people somehow, right now, there are people who strictly do this online through Instagram. I think that's beautiful. I think if you can command the attention of people with a strong hook and a strong message, um, and you can have sales directly through like an Instagram, um, that is beautiful. We have one client who does this very well. She has about 70,000 followers and she sells a $100 product, um, you know, many, many times every day through reels and she is doing well. And we spend a lot of time evaluating her hooks. We spend a lot of time evaluating her um, automations and her email funnels and her pipelines. So it's not, it's not just like throwing up a reel. Like she has an entire funnel on the back end of how these people can engage. And the language in that is so important. 
So there's a lot of strategy that goes into that method, but that method is possible. But I would say that method is not possible in the beginning. When you don't have a lot of Instagram followers, you don't have a lot of big online following, like you're going to have to have actual conversations with people. And this is honestly, I think what stops a lot of daring daughters because the energy of those conversations, they just don't have it in them. And that's because of the next point I'm about to make. Okay. That's because they don't know how to handle rejection and we put way too much energy in rejection. So this is point number five is my son handles rejection like a boss. Okay. So I think this is the single most important reason that my son has been successful is he truly does not care if he gets rejected. He knows not everybody wants this card. That's okay. And one time I was doing a sales training and they were like, you need to see sales as like offering people a piece of gum. Do you want a piece of gum? Do you want a piece of gum? Do you want a piece of gum? If the person doesn't want a piece of gum, you're not like, oh my gosh, they don't want my gum. No, you're like, it's fine. They don't want gum. That's fine. Too bad because your breath stinks and you need some gum, right? But like, no, just kidding. But my son, he was able to get rejected. He got rejected almost every other door. So imagine how it could be in his head. He could walk up to a house and be like, oh, I'm probably going to get rejected. But he didn't. He's just like, no, I'm here. I'm here to tell people about the free oil changes and the free Dairy Queen. I'm going to help give you some free money. (laughs) Right. And so we, I think the reason my son is this way, well, there's a couple of things. I think his personality has something to do with it. And he's a boy. I think there's something, I think that we have in our culture, um, kind of taught boys to be more tough when it comes to rejection. And we have taught girls to be very relational. If you think about this, if, you know, we give girls dolls to play with when they're little and we give boys toys that help them build things. Now imagine if we just had never decided that girls should have dolls and boys should have things to build things. Imagine if we just gave every kid dolls, okay? And everyone had a doll. If you're a boy or a girl and you had a doll and that's just the way it was. Well, when you give someone a doll, they are learning how to care for things and be relational. And um, it's a very nurturing kind of uh, toy to play with, right? But when you have things that are building blocks, you're using different parts of your brain. You're using math, you're using physics. There's, I have lots of opinions about how we have raised our children to have stereotypes about sales and business. And typically girls are not taught the things about business, okay? They're not taught about the math and um, the rejection part, you know, because we're kind of tender. And I do think God made us that way for a reason so that we could be mothers um, and that we could be caretakers. I believe that. But that doesn't mean you can't have the ability to be rejected and it mean nothing. So in our home, and I learned this from Sarah Blakely, who is the founder and um, she's a minority owner now of the company Spanx, but she grew that to a billion plus and then sold it. Um, But I think she still owns a minority share in it. Um, But she... um, used to, she tells stories about when she was a kid. And this is where I got this, how when she was a kid, her dad would celebrate if they got rejected. So they would actually like celebrate their kids if they got rejected. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do that with my kids because I was taught that if you get rejected, it means you did something wrong. Okay. Like if you're rejected, then you must have done something wrong. And so that's what I grew up with the story in my head. So I never wanted to get rejected because I'm like, I probably did something wrong if I got rejected, right? Or if I got rejected, it was usually because I was in trouble, okay? So we have a totally different philosophy in our home about this. So we normalize rejection. We talk about like getting rejected all the time. Um, We talk about it like, hey, friends, kids are gonna reject you. Coaches are gonna reject you. Um, Teachers are gonna reject you. People are gonna reject you. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Boyfriends are going to reject you. Girlfriends are going to reject you. It just means you're not a match. That's it. And it just means that that wasn't meant to be. So if you can start normalizing rejection and not making it a story at all in your head, that it means nothing. Um, And this took me years to do in business. Years. Okay. I'm not even kidding. It probably took me four years to get to this point. So this is why I love our mastermind because we really unpack this with you and we really put the Bible to this one. Okay. Because there is a healing that has to happen when it comes to rejection. And it's not something you're going to get on a podcast. Like you need to be delivered from that. And so if you really struggle with this, come to our retreat, come to our mastermind, get in the room with someone who can literally get this chain off of your life. Okay. 
Okay. So when you don't have a story about rejection, it doesn't cause energy to be rejected. So my son could do sales longer and he could go out there and put more effort into it because he wasn't getting an energy leak every time he got rejected. The best person you can learn from in this is Jesus, okay? Jesus was rejected, okay? He's He was rejected to the, the highest amount. And he says in John 15, if the world hates you, know this. It hated me first. It hates you. It hates me before it hated you. Let me say that again. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. So Jesus is reminding us that he was hated. Okay. He was hated and you're going to be rejected. And if you can just normalize that and not make up a story about it, Jesus literally told you, don't worry about it. It hates me too. Like who cares? So handling rejection is, is I think my son's number one thing that helped him. Okay. The next thing is my son put in the time. Okay. He put in the work or not the time, the work he put in the work. Um, I believe that most people that don't have success in business is and they're like stuck in not taking action is 90% because they're paralyzed about the actual work. Okay. So if you follow Instagram gurus, they're going to tell you that like you're missing hustle, like, Oh, you got to hustle. Okay. This is, I think largely we've like moved on from the hustle culture, but they will tell you like, well, you're just not putting in the work. Okay. Which is true. You're not putting the work, but why aren't you putting in the work? Okay. Because the work isn't that hard. Okay. Now think about this. If your kid was in danger, could you hustle your way to their safety? Yes, you could in a heartbeat. Okay. But doing the work to have a sales conversation probably feels like it takes way more energy for you. It does for me than if I had to just go rescue my kid. Cause I would just spring into action and do what I needed to do. But a sales, I'm like, okay, I got to think about doing this right. What is my hook? What is my pitch? Is my product? And all the things we're talking about that takes like a lot of energy to figure that out. Right. My son didn't waste any time on the energy, the rejection or the excuses. He made a plan and then he just worked efficiently, okay? Working efficiently requires good habits. You have to have good habits to do the work efficiently and to do this and to make this happen. Let me tell you about some good habits and some bad habits and, and things that I that I have had to learn and overcome and even are still are still working on right now. So the best habit that you can have when it comes to sales is having sales blocked into your day when you have the best energy. So for me, that's nine to 11 AM. So from nine to 11 AM, I have the best energy. I'm already ready for the day. I've hopefully worked out for the day. I'm dressed. My hair's done. I've checked in my, I've already checked my email. Everything's all taken care of. And now I have like good energy, right? I would never do sales at four o'clock in the afternoon. I don't have good energy. Plus people are leaving. They don't want to talk to you at that time. So I do all my sales conversations from nine to 11. So on my calendar, it is blocked from nine to 11 to do sales. The only appointments that are allowed to be in that space is sales conversations. Clients can't book with me in that time. People can't get a hold of me in that time, except for sales. But like, I'm not doing things that aren't sales in that time. Now, my biggest habit that I am really trying to get over is like getting squirreled. Like maybe I go to open my sales spreadsheet and I go to work my sales plan. It's in the master plan that you can purchase. I follow the same plan for me. I open my plan and maybe I'm like, oh yeah, I got to make an appointment for my son for his braces. Right. And then I'm like, find myself on the phone with the dentist. And I'm like, wait, wait, no, this is sales time. So having a good habit around sales is really setting aside the time to do the sales. And this is what my son did. He's like, this is when I'm going to do it. And then when he did that, he wasn't scrolling on his phone while he's walking down the street. He, he doesn't have anything to scroll. He doesn't have social media, but he's literally doing the work. Okay. So figure out when is the best time for you to do the work. Okay. Last bonus tip. Um, and this one is, I think the most important, the most important piece of all of this. Okay. So if you've, you've gotten to hear Thank you for hanging in. We are, you know, 40 minutes into this episode. Hopefully this is juicy. If this is, share it with somebody. But the bonus tip is time is an illusion. 
So many people say I don't have time. That is a lie from the enemy. There are some really good TED Talks on how time is a complete illusion. And if you know anything about physics or have read anything in the Bible, you know that time is an illusion. God says it's an illusion. He tells us it's an illusion. And I'm going to show you a verse of that. But I put a link to a TED Talk that is my favorite TED Talk of all time about how time is irrelevant. You cannot say you don't have enough time. Everybody has enough time. You would find time if you needed to. And this TED Talk is all about how this woman had a very busy life and then her basement flooded. And she had to devote all this time that she didn't think she had to fixing her basement flood. And the the, the TED Talk is, everyone should listen to this TED Talk. It changed my life. I listened to it while I was driving and home from work one day. And from that day forward, my time has never been the same. So that's how revolutionary this TED Talk is. So you gotta get the link in the, in the blog. Um, go to www.thedaringdaughters.com forward slash blog, and you can click on the blog link for this episode and um, and get in there. Okay, so my son, he has very little time for sales, okay? And his schedule is, I kind of went over his schedule at the beginning of this episode about how he gets up early, he plays sports, he goes to school, so he knew he didn't have a lot of time. So what he did is... He just blocked a few a few hours in his week and was like, this is when I'm going to do this. And then he just did it, okay? So time doesn't have to stop you. And because time is an illusion and it's relative, it's best to do it around your energy, like we talked about before, okay? But also, it's important to know if it's your season. Is this your season to grow a business? Or is this your season to be a mother? Or is this your season to be in a learning state? Or is this your season to rest? Like you need to know what is your season. God talks about that in Ecclesiastes, about how there's a season for everything. But here's what here's the verse that tells us that time is not time is an illusion. In 2 Peter, it says, but don't overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. Time is expansive with God. It goes forwards and backwards. Okay. It's not like a watch. So thinking about your life and it having seasons in it, instead of it being about time is going to change your sales. I hope this episode has helped you. I'm so glad you came to listen today. If this has been helpful, please share it with us. We want to help you here at The Daring Daughters to live bold in your faith, in your family, and in your income. You can go to thedaringdaughters.com and you can see courses and resources and things that we have for you, both for free and for purchase, to help you in your calling. Growing a business, growing a calling can be extremely um, uncertain at times because it's a lot of trial and error. And we have, over the course of of helping 30 plus women start businesses, some to multiple seven figures, we have uh, created a formula, if you will, of how you need to have certain things go in your business. One mistake we see people make is they try to create a product and sell it and then no one purchases it because they didn't do the things that need to come before the creation of the product. We have a five-step method that we call Seek, Serve, Sell, Scale, Send. We'd love to help you with it. So head over to thedaringdaughters.com and check out our resources. Thank you so much for joining us in another episode of the Daring Daughters podcast. We encourage you to take the lessons shared today and apply them in your own life. Remember, success isn't measured solely by financial gain, but by the life's touch, the heart's change, and the kingdom impact you leave behind. If you've enjoyed today's episode and want to continue engaging with our community of fearless women of faith, we invite you to leave a review and screenshot this episode and share it on your favorite social media and remember to tag us at The Daring Daughters so that we can reach even more women like yourself. Remember, dear Daring Daughter, you were created for such a time as this. Your faith, your business, and your life purpose are beautifully intertwined. And together, they have the power to change the world. Until next time, stay daring, stay faithful, and keep shining your light.